Hello, I hope this video finds you healthy. My name is Gabriel Araújo and I'm a PhD student at Instituto de Biodiversidade e Sustentabilidade, Rio de Janeiro, Brasil. Now, I'm going to talk a little about the central project of my PhD, Hidden Biodiversity, Genetic Connectivity Patterns of Cryptobranched Reef Fishes in the Atlantic Ocean. Reef environments represent one of the most biodiverse ecosystems of the planet, with over 6,000 reef fish species. Even if you're not a big ichthyophone enthusiast, you have most likely seen fishes that look like the ones on the screen. In contrast, this kind of fish is not familiar to most people. In this context, let's say that we have on one side the large reef fish families, that includes the most charismatic and studied species, and on the other side the cryptobantic reef fish families, which includes the smallest species, generally shy, and with a peculiar beauty. In any case, there is a formal definition for this distinction, and it is based on the size of the adults. If a family has more than 10% of species with less than 5 cm as adults, then it's considered a cryptobantic family. The 17 families that have these attributes, best 42 that do not, contribute with about 44% of reef fish species. Most of the richness of cryptobantic species belong to two lineages, globiforms and blaniforms, which account for more than half of the species. My PhD is focused on the blaniforms. It is one of the most diverse lineages of reef fishes, with about thousands of species. They are typical cryptobantic reef fishes, inhabit shallow marine environments, such as in territorial zones and tidal pools. They have restricted mobility as adults, and their mode of reproduction includes adhesive and bentsk spawning. These biological traits suggest a restriction on dispersal potential. Of the approximately 350 species of blending forms occurring in the Americas, only four are not restricted to the region. Parabenos pelicornis, Labrisombros nuquipinis, Escartela afcristata, and a species of Ophiobelenis not yet formally described. Therefore, the main goal of my study is to understand the processes and the forces that have shaped the evolutionary history of three of these lineages, Labrisombros nuquipinis, Ophiobelenis sp, and Escartela afcristata. Individuals of the three species complexes were sampled to encompass distinct biogeography regions of the Atlantic Ocean, in both Western and Eastern Atlantic. We use DNA data to achieve the objects of the project. Regarding Labrisomus nuquipinis, preliminary analysis suggests the existence of distinct lineages spread across the Atlantic, as you can see on the phylogenetic tree. Samples from more locations will still be used, and more DNA data will be generated to include the more refined analysis. Concerning Ophiobelenus and Scartella, some works of our group have already indicated the presence of several lineages in different parts of the Atlantic. In common, the presence of two lineages of both genera was detected in Brazil. Surprisingly, these studies also found a strong genetic connection between populations of Ophiobelenus and Scartella from South Brazil and Eastern Atlantic. We use the genetic and the oral data to generate information for better understanding the possible causes of the biogeographic connection between East Atlantic and South Brazil. Seeking to elucidate if it occurs due to natural causes, mainly larval dispersion and marine currents, or if it is a consequence of anthropic activities like vessels and offshore oil and gas structures. The latter are suitable places for blennies and harbor a biofouling community, including corals, barnacles, and bivalves, which are widely used by blennies as shelter nests. The resolution of this question is indispensable for understanding the evolutionary forces that act in the Atlantic, especially the depth of anthropic action, thus helping to understand the dynamics of interactions between populations and habitats. The conservation status and the extinction risk of populations at the molecular level will also be provided, supporting conservation guidelines that might assist in the creation and management of marine protected areas.